All right, party peoples of the interwebs, Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler. I'm going to have exactly one take to do this because the wife and the kids are out of the house for the next, I don't know, 10 minutes, which is my moment of silence to do the daily update of Alec Baldwin's day one of his involuntary manslaughter charges. He's currently going through criminal trial in New Mexico, and we have had the opening statements and three or four witnesses today in the context of him having pulled the trigger but not pulled the trigger of a prop gun, which is in fact a real gun in the context of the shooting of the movie called Rust that ended up with the death of Helena Hutchins and the director Joel Souza getting that bullet in his shoulder. That bullet passed through Helena Hutchins and ended up in his shoulder and didn't penetrate him through the back, but that's what happened. We all know what happened because uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed has already had her trial. She was convicted for involuntary manslaughter as well. Hannah Gutierrez Reed was the armorer on set, the daughter of the infamous or famous, well known, reputable, her father, I forget what his name was right now, it doesn't really matter. She's got credentials. She was the armorer on set who was responsible for making sure the rounds were dummy rounds or blank rounds in the revolver that Alec Baldwin was using for this scene in a church. They were in the desert of New Mexico, and it was during COVID where the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, was not allowed in the church where they were shooting the scene because of protocol, quota for COVID quota. You know, you, when you're shooting with live guns and guns that are prop guns, but called prop guns, but they're real guns and containing dummy rounds, COVID is the real concern there, and you don't want to have too many people in a church, so you got the people wearing face masks and whatever. All right. That's the trial going on right now. Alec Baldwin is under trial, currently going through his trial for involuntary manslaughter, which could carry a maximum sentence of 18 months in jail if convicted. Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the armor, has already been convicted, and the question is whether or not that plays for or against Alec Baldwin. I think most legal people with legal minds understand and agree that Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the armorer, having been convicted for involuntary manslaughter because she was in charge of the rounds that were going into the prop gun, which is a real gun that ended up in the hands of Alec Baldwin that ended up having real rounds in it. She was in charge of that. She got convicted. That sort of could, in theory, according to a jury, interrupt the causal link between Hannah Gutierrez Reed being criminally liable for not having done her job as armorer and Alec Baldwin having been the one who held the gun and pulled the trigger, but arguably didn't pull the trigger if you're Alec Baldwin, although he basically admitted he pulled the trigger, but said he didn't pull the trigger. Whether or not that is the interruption of responsibility, criminal liability for Alec Baldwin. Okay, fine. They had their opening statements and their opening statements really more closely resembled closing arguments. I have never practiced criminal law before. I am a former Quebec civil litigator, so I don't have any meaningful criminal law experience, saving except for the course that I took during law school and the bar exam, which I passed in and had criminal law answers. But I understand the limitations of my own knowledge and experience. So take it with a grain of salt, but I do know how to pick the brains of bigger, smarter lawyer brains than myself. Metaphorically speaking, because physically speaking, that would be gross. They had their opening statements, which more closely resembled closing arguments in that you didn't just have them saying, this is what we're going to prove. This is what the evidence is going to show. More specifically in the Alec Baldwin defense opening statements slash closing arguments, they were basically saying, arguing already, Alec Baldwin was not responsible for this. This was Hannah Gutierrez Reed. It's a, not a, a actor's responsibility to check a gun for ammunition. He just, you know, acts. And it's the armor's responsibility, the director's responsibility, whatever. Everyone else except for Alec Baldwin. And the defense said a bunch of things in their opening statements, which I think are objectively dumb and will come back to bite them in the butt, in that they say, look, this was a movie set, Alec Baldwin acts, armorer's armor, director's direct, and nobody expects the actor to check the gun, double check the gun, double check the ammunition, make sure it's a dummy round, a blank round, whatever you want to call it. He acts, and everyone else does their thing. Except for the fact that you have Alec Baldwin in his roadside interviews back in the day, because I covered this at the time, saying how he knew never to point a gun at a person. No, 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 no. You never point a gun at a person. No, no, no. You never pull the trigger because even pulling the trigger and actioning the hammer could damage the firing pin on a gun. No, no, no. You never do that. Except he pointed the gun clearly at a human 
whether or not he pulled the trigger that comes into play today, he violated one of his own rules, which was you never point the gun at a person. Set that aside. The prosecution in their opening statements made some good points. I mean, I don't think it changes the needle or moves the needle one way or the other. Prosecution comes in and says, uh, yeah, you know, this is a movie set. This is Hollywood. They treated it like it's all fiction and it's all fantasy. But this is real life. This is a working situation. This is a work ground. And they were negligent. And I'd say they, Alec Baldwin, was negligent. He didn't check his firearm. He basically acted like this was fantasy land. A bunch of Hollywood actors carrying guns, firing them left, right, and center. And he acted like that. And it resulted in the death of Helena Hutchins. The defense in their opening statements slash closing arguments said, you know, it's not his responsibility. He doesn't need to check anything. And that's the way it's going to go. The bottom line, however, is that Alec Baldwin has made prior statements, public statements, which everyone can watch. They're out there because he gave a George Stephanopoulos interview. He gave a roadside interview out in the streets of Vermont. He was talking and jabbering and flapping his lips back in the day where he said, I know never to pull the trigger. I know never to point a gun at a person. How many guns have been fired in Hollywood? Billions of rounds. He actually said billions of rounds have been fired in Hollywood. And um, he demonstrated a knowledge of the risk that is associated with holding, carrying, and using a prop gun. To be highlighted and highlighted until the day is over. Prop guns do not mean fake dummy guns. They mean guns. Real guns. Real firearms that are the property of the set. So a prop gun doesn't mean a fake gun. It means a real gun. Sometimes there were some fake guns there as well, but it means or could include a real functional firearm that is the property of the set. And in this case, as the prosecution pointed out in their opening statements, Alec Baldwin wanted the biggest, baddest gun, real fully functioning gun, whether or not it had blanks in it, that he could get because he's playing a big bad dude named something Rust in this movie Rust. Okay. They had their opening statements. Prosecution pointed out that Alec Baldwin wanted the biggest gun because he wanted to play the role. They even played some of him pulling the gun and you know, doing his thing. Defense argues, and I think it's an untenable defense, that Alec Baldwin is totally uh, blameless, absolved of responsibility because he's not supposed to check the gun. He's just the actor and he doesn't know any better, except he already said he knew better and he already knew said a lot of things. Set that aside. Okay, fine. First witness of the day was a deputy, Lafleur. Why do I remember his name was Lafleur? Because it was the guy's name from Dodgeball, Lafleur, Lafleur. They had a deputy Lafleur come in. He's the one who basically was one of the first deputies, first responders on the scene. They needed him. This guy was um, as uh, energetic a witness as, I don't know, as Rodney Dangerfield would say, if it got any more exciting, a funeral might have broken out. Lafleur came in and his sole purpose was to administ administer admit as evidence his lapel, his body cam footage. He gets there, uh, you see a bunch of people wearing face masks in the church, administering first aid to Helena Hutchins. It's like, it's a sick, disgusting irony that in the context of the situation where a woman was shot with a real gun and they're administering first aid, these buffoons are wearing their masks because COVID. And whatever hindrance that might have had on communications between the people, none of this was adduced as evidence in the trial. This is just my own meanderings. These idiots wearing face masks indoors and outdoors in the Mexican desert or the new Mexican desert uh, because COVID. Whatever that played by way of complicating communications, COVID. All right. So Deputy Lafleur is the first witness. Dry, boring, and I don't think value added and I don't think uh, detrimental. Testify that he came in, saw the shooting, and that he asks the people to remain distant from each other once this becomes a scene of a crime and not anything else. And he does testify at some point, you know, it became a crime scene. He asked Alec Baldwin to not sit or talk with the other potential witnesses. They did have some interactions, which was used against him in cross-examination. He was faulted a little bit for not doing his job properly, which I thought was unfair and unnecessary because I don't know why the prosecution would have had to have undermined the work of the deputy first responder. I understand why the defense did it, but even still, they're not going to score many points by saying that, as they did, accuse him of having allowed Alec Baldwin to discourse with other potential witnesses, Hall, the associate director, and other people. I thought for a second, but I was swiftly corrected on the live stream that's being carried out 
by the other law tubers out there and you should check it out uh, uh andrea burkhart danny on joe nearman good logic nate eric hunley there's a live stream that they're doing all day long I thought maybe they were going to say like any statement that Alec Baldwin made to the deputy Lafleur would be inadmissible because he hadn't been Mirandized. That was my query. I don't know how it pans out, but according to the other lawyers who have more meaningful American criminal law experience, that's not where they can go with that. He hadn't been arrested and therefore there was no obligation to Mirandize him. And so the things that Alec Baldwin said could still be used against him. In defense, they were sort of saying like Alec Baldwin was talking with other witnesses and they might have tainted each other's testimony. Bottom line, Nobody's denying that Alec Baldwin looked rattled, was rattled, and didn't look like he wanted to pull the trigger and kill somebody. But the defense was hammering Lafleur, the deputy, for having said at some point in prior uh, statements that he didn't think Alec Baldwin intentionally did the act. Intentionally and act are the two operative words. And they're like, well, you, you said he didn't intentionally do the act, therefore Alec Baldwin has to be innocent. Alec Baldwin is not being charged with anything for intentionality related to it. He's actually being charged with uh, um, involuntary manslaughter, which is the result of negligence, not intentionality. And whether or not Alec Baldwin intentionally carried out the act is irrelevant because intentionality, irrelevant. And what is the act? Don't ask the first responding deputy what the act was because the act was not first degree intentional homicide. It was involuntary manslaughter, which is based on negligence and the act, therefore, is somewhat different depending on what you understand the act to be, the criminally culpable act. And that was basically the sum of um, Deputy Lafleur's testimony. Then they had Benavides, who was another one of the responding deputies. The dude knew how to do his job. He testified how he got on scene, uh, isolated the firearm, isolated the dummy rounds. There was a little prop cart with the guns on it, and on that prop cart were dummy rounds, a fake gun, some boxes of whatever. It was all in mayhem disarray. Which is why I don't understand why the prosecution was trying to get that testimony out of Deputy Benavides, because the fact that that prop cart was in disarray, fine. It might make it look like a half-assed production, but it sort of does tend to absolve Alec Baldwin of responsibility in the sense that he was not responsible for that prop card. He was not responsible for the dummy rounds on that prop card. He was only responsible for what he did or did not do with that gun, more specifically what he did with that gun, which was pointed at a human and either pulled the trigger or not, it went off in his hand while he was pointing it at a human, while he knew that he was not supposed to point it at a human. Benavides, uh, I hope I'm getting his name right, was a consummate professional. He said he got the, the, the gun, put it in the car, locked his unit, they call their car's unit, and then uh, went around looking for other um, you know, evidence. It was a crime scene, it turned into a crime scene, and he picked up the box of the dummy rounds or the ammunition on site. There was a third witness, I forget what it was, but the fourth witness, pop, pop, poppery, 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 whatever. She allegedly, not allegedly, she did testify during the Hannah Guterres Reed trial. She was the expert uh, in that trial as well. She only got through her examination in chief her cross starts tomorrow, and she basically testified to the effect that they got the gun, it was a real gun, there was a dummy or a, a, a non-functional replica, whatever, a fake gun on that prop cart, that they found live rounds on that prop cart. They found live rounds in Alec Baldwin's belt that had bullets in it. She goes on to give her understanding of what uh, dummy rounds versus blanks versus live rounds are. The bottom line, it was a categoric shit show on the production of Rust. There were live rounds in Alec Baldwin's holster. There were live rounds in the box of ammunition. And the only question is gonna be, who's responsible at the end of the day? I've been staring at this martini the entire time, not sipping from it. I'll do that now. The only question is going to be, who's responsible for it? I said in opening statements, the problem that the defense made is that they're going to say Alec Baldwin was not responsible for checking the various rounds in the firearm that was in his hands. So that when it goes off in his hands while he's pointing it at a person, Helena Hutchins, it's not his legal culpable responsibility because he's not supposed to check the rounds. And my statement, and if the prosecution is listening and they might see this, they might adopt it. Whether or not he was responsible for checking the various rounds to, in, the, in the gun to see if they were live, dummies, or blanks, 
He was responsible not to point that gun at a person. And he admitted that in his roadside George Stephanopoulos CNN interviews. He admitted that he knew not to point a gun at anything you do not want to destroy. And he did it. And he destroyed it. So whether or not he didn't know that there were live rounds in the gun, the reason why he knew not to point that gun at a person, at anything you did not want to destroy, was specifically because of all of those risks. So Hannah Gutierrez Reed, her obligation to check each dummy round or not, make sure that they were actual blanks or not, she might have failed in her obligation to do that. But Alec Baldwin admitted that he knew not to point a prop gun because it's a real gun at a human because there is a risk in pointing a real gun at a human. In the opening statements, actually, before I forget this, the defense was saying they declared that gun a cold gun, meaning that gun couldn't hurt anybody unless it fell on their toe. Horse crap! Contradicted by Alec Baldwin's own off-road and George Stephanopoulos interviews. He knew that a real gun can always hurt and kill someone, even if it's allegedly not loaded with live ammunition because it's a real freaking gun. And so being told that a real gun is cold does not make it something as inert as a hammer that can only hurt you. Oh gosh, my dad's there. That can only hurt you if it falls on your foot. It's a real gun that can kill you if you point it at something that you want to destroy or don't want to destroy and it's loaded with a real gun. So they contradicted Alex, uh, Alec Baldwin's own defenses in the opening statements. Thus far, the two deputies have only admitted as evidence the dash cam or their uh, lapel camera body cam footage. There were live rounds on set. Whether or not it was Hannah Gutierrez-Reed and a collective failure, that Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is going to jail. The question is whether or not Alec Baldwin committed involuntary homicide, involuntary manslaughter, my apologies, when he admitted you never point a gun at something you don't want to destroy. No, 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 I would never do that. But he did it. It went off and it killed him. They had the issue as to whether or not he pulled the trigger and uh, popple or popper or whatever. Popper. It might have been popper. The expert today was testifying as to the tests that the FBI did, A, to determine live ammunition versus dummy rounds, and B, they were testing for DNA on the trigger to see who pulled the trigger or who had their hand on the gun. No real dispute about that. They were also testing whether or not this firearm could fire if no one pulled the trigger. And in doing that, they used a rubber mallet and smashed it from all various angles to see if it could accidentally discharge. And um, that's the argument is that they destroyed the gun in that test and that Alec Baldwin alleges he didn't pull the trigger. The bottom line, it doesn't matter. I don't think. Because Alec Baldwin, in his out-of-court statement, said, you don't point a gun at a person. I know that. I would never do that. But she told me to do it. And then the question is going to be, at the end of the day, does he get to claim that um, he, didn't, he didn't mean to point it or he didn't point it or it went off in his hands? I am skeptical. We'll see where it goes. Tomorrow, they're going to pick up with the cross of Popper, the expert, and they're undoubtedly going to raise hell about the fact that this firearm has now been damaged beyond all recognition and that you cannot function it anymore. And they've deprived the defense out of verifying the functionality of the very firearm. The bottom line, the gun worked because it killed Helena Hutchins. Alec Baldwin was holding it and he pointed it at her. And whether or not there was cumulative blame, cumulative fault, Alec Baldwin did what he said he knew not to do. And it didn't matter if Helena Hutchins failed in her obligations to make sure that those rounds were actually dummy blank rounds. Alec Baldwin also failed in his. Did something arguably reckless, pointed what he knew was a real gun at a human that he did not intend to destroy and he destroyed it. So we'll see where it goes. Day one, a little bit longer than I intended to do, and uh, we'll see what happens on day two. I will not be live streaming it because I'll be in a car, but you can watch it on Nate the Lawyer, Good Logic, who is a hair away from 100,000 subs on YouTube. Go support Joe Nearman, Good Logic, on YouTube. Help him cross that 100,000 subscriber threshold so he can get that beautiful silver button. Eric Hunley, Danny on. Andrea Burkhart, Emily D. Baker. I know I'm free. Oh, Uncivil Law, Kurt is also streaming this. So they're, they're aggregating and some of them are doing it independently. No shortage of places to watch this live for real-time legal analysis. But if you like what I do, make sure that you are liked, shared, subscribed, hit the notification bell, drop a comment when one of my videos comes up. And uh, I'm off to Toronto for a Rebel News event and then to Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention. Bada bing, bada boom, viva fry. You know what? Oh my gosh, my back hurts. Booyah!